what happened to my eyes in this video i want to share a little bit of my testimony of how i overcame insecurity if it's your first time watching my name is vlad i'm a pastor at hungry gen i also have a ministry where we offer digital content free of charge consider subscribing so you won't miss content that we upload on youtube so what happened with my eyes actually i was born this way my mom told me later on that she was experiencing difficulty during childbirth and they're the most likely the doctor she says that he um, damaged a, an optical nerve in my head and because of that i started to um, later on they saw that one of my eyes looked different than the other one and it's really just the the lip over my eye that was weaker than the other but as I started to grow they started to recognize or realize that it's deeper than that because if I will look up one eye actually looks up the other one does not I still can see perfect or I can still uh, see clearly I don't have any I don't wear glasses I don't wear contacts even though I'm the only one out of my uh, four siblings and both parents who doesn't wear glasses or contacts so I have a good vision praise God but I grew up like this I was born like this so it was not some kind of an injury uh, that I acquired or got throughout my life but it was during my birth I struggled with insecurity because of that as you can imagine as a teenager growing up around other teenagers this was difficult for me to accept myself and to associate myself with other people there were feelings of inferiority um, I was bullied in school I was uh, struggling with grades I was struggling making friends and I had a very difficult time believing that God had a purpose or a plan for my life it all started later on around the about 11 to 12 years of age when I started to become more aware of myself and where in school I was being compared and I started to compare myself to other students to other guys when I was being picked on by other people being called with names that had to do with my eyes and I would look in the mirror and of course I didn't like what I saw and then when my family immigrated to the United States I was 13 years of age we settled right here in Tri-Cities I went to an English school where I didn't speak any English there was not a lot of immigrants in that school so it was very difficult to be assimilated into the American culture and I struggled very very much to um, belong to um, be useful I had bad grades first year partially was because I didn't understand anything that was being presented in school it was around that time that my uncle started the local church the Good News Church and my family joined that church and I had a hard time connecting uh, in the church that was full of my relatives full of my cousins partially was because things that I tried to do in that small church I wasn't good at you know things like being on the music team or helping with the sound system I just was not good at so they asked me to you know step down from those things and it just made things worse because you know here I am you know struggling with insecurity already because of my physical appearance I am not doing good in school and then I am not feeling like I am valued and I have any worth to offer in the church and so my family loved me my mom and dad have always been very supportive but you know the enemy sows these lies into your mind and and I believe those lies I fostered those lies and I walked with those lies I um, nurtured those lies for a while until I believe they actually became a stronghold in my mind the stronghold of fear the stronghold of insecurity and inferiority uh, it led to that point where uh, things became hard for me that I did not want to live never contemplated suicide or taking my life I was very afraid of where that could lead but I definitely entertained the thoughts of just just hating my life and not wanting to live the way I started to channel or what I started to do with those feelings of self-hate really is I knew that if I keep on building that I will eventually you know self-destruct and so I would go to God and I would start to you know kind of like vomit or you know really express everything that I felt to God in prayer and out of that moment that time I started to experience God personally and he started to touch me he started to fill me with his love he started to give me a deeper understanding of his word I've read his word before but now I started to really feed myself with what the scripture said about myself and my mind started to get renewed 
and this stronghold layer by layer was being destroyed the stronghold of self-hate the stronghold of self-rejection um, and I blamed it before on other people I said well if other people would accept me you know then I wouldn't feel like that if I would be having good grades then I wouldn't feel this about myself in fact I kind of even blamed God I thought that if he would have simply fixed my problem of my physical appearance then I would be so much better in um, you know the issue of athletics I would be so much better in academics I would be so much better with friends I would be so much better in church I, I could do so much more if he could only fix my cosmetics in fact I even prayed for God to fix my body um, to heal my skin to you know um, fix whatever is wrong with the optical nerve I've had a lot of people ever since then try to offer a prayer for healing and uh, nothing happened uh, not that I don't believe that God wants to heal those things but I do believe that it's not a necessity um, it's not something that hurts me um, it's not something that is going to fix my self-esteem or my self image because my problem was the root problem that I had had nothing to do with my skin the way it was stretched over my skeleton the root problem I had is idolatry I built my self-image my self-worth on sinking sand and I was quickly punished or if I could say penalized by that idolatry it pretty much backfired right in my face I did not know at that time but the problem was not with my appearance. All of this simply exposed that my foundation was flawed and I was trying to build it on my physical appearance, on my academic achievements, on my relationships and on how many people loved and enjoyed my company. All of those things are not bad in themselves, they're just really bad as a foundation of your identity or foundation of who you are. And so it was later on as I started to understand what the scripture teaches that the, that the righteous man he builds his house or the wise man he builds his house on the rock that the foolish man he builds his house on the sand and I started to understand that that's what I was trying to do is I was trying to have God make my sand you know physical appearance what people think of me achievements accomplishments my gifts and talents I wanted God to make that my foundation and God wouldn't do that I'm not against you know praying for healing for cosmetic things even though God's healing is really promised for the issues of infirmity pain um, that's not an issue that I have uh, thankfully and so I let that go I put it in God's hands concerning the whole issue of healing I know that one day I will have a glorified body but until that time I'm going to do the best that I can with the body that God has given me as my mind started to get renewed as I started to experience His love and His presence my heart started to get filled and I no longer became needy for these external things to satisfy an internal need and then later on it's interesting that these external things that I was really seeking and hoping for they started to kind of find their way into my life you know the Bible says if you seek the kingdom of God first everything else shall be added I actually started to experience that you know uh, I started to actually I became part of uh, the same worship team that kind of kicked me out. I became the worship leader. I started to speak and I started to become comfortable speaking. I wasn't afraid of my classmates in my high school. My grades went through the roof. I started to get straight A's in very difficult topics that was very difficult for me to comprehend because of a language barrier. Um, I started to get open doors to minister in small little like Bible clubs in school and I didn't promote myself. Nobody knew that I was a you know preacher. And then just one thing led to another, um, God started to use me as, as my identity in Him became more secure and more anchored. One of the biggest fears that I had is that I'll never get married. And you know, that was solved too, you know, eventually I got married and God blessed me with a very beautiful girl that I am married with for the last 12 years already and happily married. God started to give me, you know, blessings and influence and all of that. Today, of course, there's a danger of allowing those things to blur or to replace my foundation, which is, you know, what God says about me and what God thinks about me. Maybe you're watching this video right now and maybe you're struggling with identity, insecurity, knowing who you are. In fact, Dr. Maxwell Maltz says that at least 95% of all people in their lives have been blinded by the feelings of inferiority to some extent. And to millions, this same feeling of inferiority is a serious handicap 
to success and happiness. See, if you are insecure, if you have a low self-esteem or inferiority complex, it will produce few things. It will produce insecurity. It will give you a sense of worthlessness and hopelessness. It can produce jealousy where you will doubt your own worth and you'll be jealous of those who appear to be better off than you. It can produce anger where you compare yourself with others and you become angry and resentful. It can produce fear where you will have hidden fears that others will discover who you really are and you feel like you're just putting on a face but the real you is just inferior and insecure. It can produce selfishness because if you think about it, a lack of self-esteem produces total absorption in meeting our own needs. Or it can produce guilt because you begin to focus on your failure instead of forgiveness and you walk in defeat and in guilt. See, as a Christian, you cannot think wrongfully and live rightly. We cannot believe in the error and practice truth. A lot of people think that humility is really being self-belittling and self-condemning and that is God's way of humility. But humility is not thinking less of yourself, it's thinking less about yourself. Humility is agreeing with God's Word. And if I look back at my life, I would say these two things that really have changed my self-esteem. I don't like to use the word self-esteem because the word self in it kind of cancels the whole esteem part but knowing who you are in Christ you, you get my drift. The first one if you're dealing with insecurity, if you're dealing with inferiority, low self-esteem, the first thing that I would encourage you is to begin to develop your intimacy with the Holy Spirit. I believe that's the cure for insecurity. Who you are as a Christian comes from whose you are. See you can't build your self-esteem or your identity on your appearance, on your academics, on your accomplishments. And what people say about you, it has to be grounded on Jesus. And Jesus is someone you can know. You can actually get to know Jesus today. You can get to know the Holy Spirit who lives inside of you. As you begin to focus more on the Holy Spirit, you lose focus on, you, on yourself. As you begin to become more aware of Him, you become less aware of you. And a lot of times that's all that is needed, is become less aware of ourselves. See the presence of God doesn't necessarily make you more beautiful. It just His beauty becomes so captivating that everything else doesn't matter. It's not that it doesn't matter that you no longer take care of yourself, but it just ceases to become your foundation. It ceases to matter to you and no longer becomes your distraction. Your appearance no longer becomes your idol. You know, sometimes I look at people who are super good looking and that's something what I've noticed later on as I started to get to know people that are talented, people that are mass muscular, people that are even educated, people that are rich, people that are good looking and quite few of them as I started to get to know a lot of them I realized they're actually as insecure as I was because their foundation is flawed. They constantly compare themselves to other people and they are as miserable as I was. A sense of confidence, sense of appreciation, healthy appreciation of self is not found in reaching certain goals, getting particular body type. It's found in the peaceful relationship that you have with Jesus Christ, that you have with the Holy Spirit. And that is your foundation. If you develop that, my friend, you will no longer be obsessed or depressed concerning you because your life will be obsessed with Him. I know it's simple, but it's life-changing. It changed my life. The second thing is feed on God's Word. You may say, well Vlad, I got the Bible, you know, listen to podcasts. It's more than that. You have to let the truth set you free. See, all that insecurity is rooted is in facts. Facts, they change. You know, it's a fact that I was born like that. But the truth is, God wanted me on this earth. It's a fact that I had two eye surgeries but they didn't solve the problem and these surgeries I had before I even turned 13 actually one was in Ukraine and one was in the United States and so it's a fact I had them they didn't solve the problem but the truth is that Jesus died on a cross for me it's a fact that I had a very difficult time connecting with people but the truth is Jesus Christ loved me so much that he died for me it's a fact that I can't play music really well 
well, actually can't play music at all, um, or sing, keep a tune. But the truth is that I'm fearful and wonderfully made and God loves to hear when I worship. So as long as I am focused on facts, I will be bound. As long as I build my life on the truth, I will be set free. It's not the presence of the truth, it's knowing the truth. You know, I had access to the truth all my life. But it was until I started to know, I started to feed myself with that truth that I started to experience freedom. You have to understand God created you. He loves you. He planned your birth. He gifted you. Jesus Christ died for you. The Holy Spirit indwells in you. Your body is valuable. Your past, forget about it. Your present, thank God for it. Your potential, discover it. Your performance, affirm it because you can do all things through Christ. Your possessions, share them with other people. Live your life where Jesus is the most important in your life, where He's the most beautiful, where He's the most amazing, where He is your pearl of great price, where He is your great and exceedingly reward, where His presence is your treasure, where His glory is your pursuit, where you pant, you long, you chase after Him and you will see that you will lose you and when you lose you, you find you. And guess which kind of you do you find? The one that's empowered by the Holy Spirit, the one that brings glory to God. That's what happened to me and I pray that that's exactly what's going to happen to you. If you're a young girl or you're a young man watching this video, I want to encourage you to get lost in Jesus. Get lost in His presence. Get lost in His love for you. And as you lose yourself, you will find yourself. If you're trying to find yourself, discover yourself, my friend, you will lose yourself. I found new me in losing me to Jesus. In losing me in the pursuit after His heart. He changed me. He gave me a new sense of identity. His Word became my foundation and His presence, my pursuit and my reward. Today He has blessed me with more than I can imagine and for that I am grateful. But if all, all those blessings will dissipate and leave my life, my life will still have Jesus and He is the most important being. And I'm not just saying these words because that's what pastors should say but I, I live by that. This is not to show off as like, oh He's like super spiritual. I'm not like that. I'm a simple person just like you and I who have come to the great need to need Jesus and because my life forced me to go there and maybe today these insecurities are pushing you. Let them push you to Jesus. May you find Him as the great reward, as one worthy of pursuit. May God's Word become alive and may the Holy Spirit become your closest friend in Jesus' name. Hey, thank you for watching this video. I hope that this testimony was an encouragement and it whetened your appetite for Jesus. Hey, hit thumbs up for this video so it can help to reach other people and share this on your groups. Let somebody know, especially maybe if you know a friend who's battling with this. Uh, share this with other people and subscribe to this channel and click on the bell so you can be reminded each time that we upload new content. Thank you. Until next video.